All right, welcome back. Extending our discussion about the Fox uh, Nation discussion of socialism and all of its flaws and why free market capitalism and freedom in general is far superior, let's talk about one of the key themes today. There is a Soviet-style totalitarian habit creeping in to our American culture. And we need to focus on this. Joining us now is David Satter, who's a former Moscow correspondent of the Financial Times and uh, Wall Street Journal, or no? Uh, I was... I wrote for the Wall Street right, Journal. You wrote for the I Journal. was. I wrote for them, but I wasn't uh, for them in Moscow. And you were... It was after Moscow. You were in the, so the old Soviet Union, and then later the new Russia. Yeah. All right, you hit them both. And our great friend Judy Shelton, senior fellow at the Independent Institute and former Trump economic advisor. And I might add, Judy, what's the name of the book you wrote that predicted the fall of the Soviet Union? It was called The Coming Soviet Crash. The subtitle was Gorbachev's Desperate Pursuit of Credit in Western Financial Markets. Well, when was that book published? It came out in January 89. Boy, nice timing. <laughs> nice timing. All right, let's go back. David, you're writing in the Wall Street Journal not too long ago about these Soviet-style totalitarian habits. Um, you have a rigged media here. Um, you have... Um, Hunter Biden laptop, you have universities, you have people, uh, speakers getting canceled or thrown off campus, uh, you've got far left people trying to rewrite American history. This strikes you, I take it, as reminiscent of the Soviet totalitarian. Well, it is. I mean, it's mass psychology. Uh, we, uh, we, a lot of times we refer to young people or, or uh, liberals as socialists. Actually, I, I, tell you, I tell you honestly, I think that's giving them too much credit. Uh, generally speaking, they, the, the people we're talking about haven't thought very deeply about these issues. Mm. They're repeating a couple of cliches that's, uh, that, that, that they heard somewhere. The real issue here is mass psychology. Mm. The ability, it, it's frighteningly, frighteningly easy for uh, a, a very poorly thought out but seemingly appealing idea to take over masses of people mm. and to mobilize them. Uh, it gives them some, a sense of meaning. It gives them a sense of purpose. It gives them uh, the idea that they're, they're doing something significant. And uh, once that gets started, the only thing that can stand in the way are uh, objective standards and uh, you know, uh, uh, true intellectual depth which, but, is, uh, which uh, is being very much undermined in our university. But we can't, right, look at, we, uh, just my thought, we can't, uh, y young people, yes, they, I don't think they've thought through anything, okay, that's easy. But um, university professors, tenured professors, who are older people, have presumably thought through a lot. And they're the ones who are stifling free speech now. They may be worse than the students. Also, as you note in this op-ed piece, the conventional mass media they're old enough to know better, and yet they're stopping free speech, they're censoring conservatives, relentlessly attacking Donald Trump. But it isn't only Trump, it's almost any conservative at all. We were just talking to uh, Nikki Haley about this, how she's attacked uh, for being a conservative woman, God forbid, and the liberal's hair goes on fire. I mean, that's what hurts the most. That's why it sounds well, if a we little Soviet-like. Yeah, if we talk about the newspapers, the, the problem is it's very hard. It's extremely hard to insist on the New York Times motto of without fear or favor. Uh, that motto, motto doesn't apply to the New York Times anymore. Right. They've uh, given up. And, the, the, and it doesn't apply to most of the, of, of the mainstream press right now. The, it, it, it takes a commitment to, to ethics and, uh, uh, and higher standards and the idea that you're going to treat all people equally. And uh, we, you know, commercial pressures plus, plus political pressures, mm. plus just the general intellectual degradation that's going on, yes. all of that has undermined it. Judy, you see it the same way. I mean, look at, I am, well, I'll ask the more generic question. Are there Soviet-style habits creeping in? Kevin Hassett writes about the drift towards socialism. What do you think? Hmm. I think there's definitely a drift toward socialism. I study central banking a lot, mm -hmm. monetary policy. Mm -hmm. I think we have an unhealthy fixation with our own central bank. 
Wow. I think it's almost, it goes against the spirit of free market they capitalism. They're the biggest central planners of all, aren't they? Really? Well, I really, I huh? think so. And huh? they're coming very close to allocating credit. Yep. And, and when I see people clinging to every word from an official, and these are well-minded monetary authorities, and they have the best interests of our country mm. as, as their objective. But I think that when you consider what is the most important price in, in democratic capitalism, in a free market economy, it's the cost of capital. Mm -hmm. And yet we, we not only allow that to be set, but then, but then we're waiting. It's almost as if the private sector is waiting to hear where it can invest and what it can do. And so when I hear um, our, our chairman saying there will be pain and we need to curtail growth, mm. we need to have more unemployment, all I can think of is growth is a solution. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you unleash the private sector, I don't think that, that low unemployment is inflationary. Mm -hmm. I don't think that um, uh, growth is inflationary. Mm -hmm. I think if you have a problem trying to equilibrate supply and demand, what you want to do is increase supply. Yes. And I'm afraid that, that just hammering the economy with higher and higher interest rates not only makes everyone feel beholden to the Fed as the, the captain that's going to steer us to a soft landing, I think that that just takes away the 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 private sector itself as the, the entity that generates real growth, Look, productive growth. Tax cuts, deregulation, limited government spending, those things would help solve inflation and would bring back prosperity. You're so right. But it drives me crazy, last word, it drives me crazy that they make, here, it happened again today, so they publish these, uh, you know, these dot points. They don't know. Their forecasting is it bad or worse than private forecasting. I mean, people live and die by this. They don't know, and they've been completely wrong. All right? I'm not saying we're all right. I just know they've been completely wrong. But why do they do it? It's Hayekian pretense of knowledge. That's what it is. <laughs> it it, it <laughs> I gotta is. Get out. It is. I know it's crazy stuff. Anyway, Judy Sheldon, David Sapp, thank you very much, and thanks for helping out this morning on.